Hello everyone, and welcome to another quick cut rate commander precon upgrade guide. The semi-regular series in which we give precon decks a quick glow up without breaking the bank. My name's Grazit, and today we'll be giving the Fallout Universes Beyond Hail Kaiser precon $35 worth of upgrades to bring it up to cut rate standards. As usual though, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this content. Consider supporting the channel directly, either via my Buy Me A Coffee or my Game Nerds affiliate link in the description if you really like it. And be sure to stick around until the end of the video to see what precon upgrades we'll be covering next. So, with that out of the way, let's start by taking a look at the commander and playstyle. This deck's face commander is Kaiser Legion's Emperor, a 4-4 human soldier that costs 1 and Mardu that has the following ability. Whenever we attack, we may sacrifice another creature. When we do, choose 2. Either create 2 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature tokens with haste that are tapped and attacking, draw a card and lose 1 life, and or have Kaiser deal damage equal to the number of creature tokens we control to target opponent. Possessing a mid-weight CMC and an average stat block for his cost, Kaiser's abilities position him to be a solid creature token focused commander, allowing us to initially turn our single spare tokens into more tokens and card advantage to help us build up our board and gather resources as we swing in, and later, once we've reached a critical mass of token bodies, turning those bodies into even more damage by converting their numbers into burn to finish off our opponents. And the base deck does an admirable job at reflecting this playstyle, including a variety of token creating effects to give us the expendable bodies we need to sack to Kaiser's effect, ways to empower our tokens so they can punch above their weight as they swing in, and even includes a small suite of on-attack and on-death payoffs to net us additional utility and value as our tokens continually crash into our opponents and die off in combat or to our commander's sack effect. However, like the Scrappy Survivor's precon before it, the base deck still suffers from having a lot of legendary entrants in it that want to do their own thing, rather than properly support Kaiser's token-centric game plan, and, while the core build's token creation is serviceable, it does seem to struggle a bit to reliably get to the critical mass of tokens we want to get to in order to get the maximum value out of our commander. So, in order to fix these issues and bring this deck up to its full potential, this upgrade will be focusing on refining our token generating capabilities with entries that can absolutely flood the board with token bodies so we can reach critical mass faster to overrun our opponents with sheer numbers, while also giving us more spare tokens to sack to Kaisar to grow our board and generate us card advantage as well, adding in more ways to turn our tokens into burn as they swing in, die off, or simply exist to tear through our opponents' life totals even faster, and slotting in even more ways for us to get value out of our relentless attacks and heavy casualties we'll be suffering, giving Kaisar's Legion all the manpower and resources it'll need to grind the NCR into the dust. So let us make our way into the territory to the east of the Colorado River in the post-apocalyptic America of Fallout, where the mighty Kaisar's Legion has managed to carve out a new empire from the radioactive remains of the old. And at its head we will find the mighty Kaiser, equal parts charismatic ruler and a brutal general whose grand vision to unify the Waste Survivors under his banner and creating a new Rome will be seen to fruition no matter the cost of human lives, which is a price his legion will gladly pay as service to the state. So, now that we know a bit more about the commander and playstyle, let's jump straight into the upgrades. Kicking things off with additional ways for us to create tokens to fuel our primary game plan, we'll start by swapping some legendary entrants by cutting Butch Deloria Tunnel Snake, who makes a better fit for a dedicated rogue and or snake themed build rather than this one, in favor of the least Revenant Medium, who works spectacularly alongside our other token creation sources to net us a free swarm of evasive tokens each turn that scales off all our other token generation sources, replacing Desdemona Freedom's Edge, who's on attack reanimation animation is okay, but doesn't really provide enough value in this build, with a Nimpikal Thousandth Moon, whose on attack token creation is a much better fit that only gets better and better every time we swing in by both making her bigger and netting us more token bodies, sidelining Aradesh the Founder, whose enlist gimmick is a fun build around but lacks any other enlist creatures in this build to net a significant value out of it here, to make room for Krinko Tin Street Kingpin, who provides us with yet another on attack focused source of token creation 
faction that only gets bigger and produces more tokens with each subsequent attack he makes, and benching Kellogg Dangerous Mind, who would make a fun treasure focus build around to make full use out of his theft effect but doesn't have those tools here to make him as good as he could be, so we'll be slotting in Adeline Resplendent Cathar in his place, who nets us three token bodies each turn and whose power scales alongside our board state so she can grow our board and take advantage of it to hit even harder. Then moving away from legendary token generators, we'll be removing both White Glove Gourmand and Sierra Nuka's biggest fan, both of which are a bit too food token oriented rather than creature token oriented to get enough use in this build, as well as the egg-like survivor's medkit, whose modes are okay but don't really enable our game plan in any significant way here, so we can make room for Sky Knight Vanguard, Loyal Apprentice, and Skrelf's Hive, all of which are cheap sources of repeatable token generation each turn as they swing in, existing alongside our commander or simply exist on their own respectively to help grow our board, exchanging out Wild Wasteland, whose compelled impulse drives a bit too reckless to be reliable here, to slot in Court of Embreath, which draws us cards a bit more reliably by making us the Monarch, nets us decent sized tokens each turn to build up our board with, and, if we can hold on to the crown for a full rotation, gives us another way to turn our wide boards into damage by burning all our opponents equal to the number of creatures we control, and letting go of Thrill Kill Disciple and Ruthless Rat Rat, whose squad costs make them a bit too awkward to use to build up our board reliably, so we can bring in Hanware Garrison and Hero of Bladehold, whose repeatable on attack token creation is much more reliable at growing our board without jumping through any hoops to do so. And then to wrap up our new token creating additions, we'll be cutting the interesting but too slow battle of Hoover Dam to slot in the legendary artifact Horn of Gondor, which takes advantage of all our humans in the 99 and human tokens we can create to exponentially grow their number each turn with more token human bodies, swapping the much too random spell stealing mysterious stranger with the on attack token creating rabble rousing, which can easily double our body count each turn as we alpha strike in with our board and nets us a free spell for doing so thanks to high away on top of that, the lackluster token creating sorcery heroic reinforcements being replaced with the instant speed token creating called the copper coats, which can take advantage of any boards our opponents are able to establish by creating an equal amount of tokens for ourselves to match it at flash speed, and cutting the two soldier specific lord captain of the watch to slot in the planeswalker Elspeth's son's champion in its place, who provides us with repeatable token creation, a board wipe that cares about bigger creatures while leaving our smaller tokens untouched, and and an ult that allows us to permanently empower our wide boards by making them all bigger and evasive to close out games. Now, with our new wave of token generators covered, let's move on to our new entries that will take advantage of all the casualties those tokens will be suffering as we swing in with them turn after turn, in which we'll be cutting the okay but too pure life gain centric and passioned orator, the too sacrifice focused Legate Lanius Kaiser's ace, who honestly just wants to helm an edict heavy build of his own, and the very strange spell theft inclusion stolen strategy, so we can make space for LSL core sadistic pilgrim, Zulaport cutthroat, and cruel celebrant, all of which turn every single casualty we suffer into more damage for our opponents to whittle them down even faster, while padding our own life totals in the process to help us win the battle of attrition, as well as replacing McCready Lamplight Mayor, who's an okay source of evasion granting for our smaller tokens but quickly becomes obsolete once we start empowering them, with Tesa Karlov, who doubles all the on-death triggers we've added to the build and those already included in it for even more value as our creatures die off, and also grants our tokens powerful keywords that allow them to intercept attacks for us even after they swing in and pad our life totals even further. Then, as a pair of more on attack focused additions to the build, we'll be scrapping the much too gimmicky draw source Yes Man Personal Securitron, so we can recruit Commissar Severina Rain, who tacks on even more burn onto our alpha strikes that scales with our number of attacking creatures, and lets us repeatedly turn our spare tokens into card advantage on top of that as a bonus and forcing Mr. House President and CEO to resign, as he deserves to helm a dice chucking build of his own instead of playing second fiddle to Kaiser, so we can add in Ishin to Heavens as one, who functions as a on attack doubler that not only gets double the use out of our commander's effect, but also all our other on attack effects in the 99 as well for even more token creation and value. 
Now, closing in on the end of our upgrades, we'll be using the remainder of our budget to help add our core stats with a few more efficient entrants, such as by replacing the Mana Rocks Charisma Bobblehead and Luck Bobblehead, who really need to work alongside the other Bobbleheads to get the most use out of their abilities, and the On Death Ramp Source Black Market, which is theoretically good but in reality is much too slow for us to get much use of in this build, with the cheaper Mana Rocks Rakdos Signet, Boros Signet, and Orzov Signet to speed up our mana curve and get Kaiser into play faster, and removing the build's excess board wipes, Hour of Reckoning, and the Nipton Lottery, along with the impractical removal spell Entrapment Maneuver, in favor of the much more efficient removal spells Swords to Plowshares, Path to Exile, and Generous Gift. The first two providing us with dirt cheap, non-destruction creature removal that we can use to remove pesky blockers that would otherwise intercept our non-expendable creatures as we swing in with them, while the last serves as a very flexible source of spot removal that can help us deal with almost any type of permanent threat that our opponents throw our way. And lastly, we'll be giving our land base a slight glow up by terraforming the subpar tap utility lands Memorial to Glory and Windbrisk Heights into the Pain Lands, Caves of Koilos, and Battlefield Forge, which speed up and fix our mana base more efficiently to help improve the build's consistency. So, now that we've covered all 28 cards that we've upgraded from the core build, let's take a look at the breakdown for this precon upgrade. Looking at the stats that matter to our game plan, we have 25 sources of token creation to help us build up our board with bodies to enable our commander, 7 cards that care about tokens, and 7 cards that can empower our creatures to make our wide board states even deadlier, 13 cards that care about our creatures attacking, and 6 cards that care about our creatures dying, so we can generate even more value off of our boards while we continually crash it into our opponents, and 5 sack effects we can use to turn our spare tokens into even more value while proccing our death payoffs in the process. For general deck stats, we have 13 ramp sources, 10 card draw sources, 11 targeted removal sources, and 2 board wipes, giving us a pretty standard array of core stats. Looking at our mana curve, we have an average CMC of 2.97, leaving us with a decently aggressive mana curve that aims to get multiple sources of token creation on board as quickly as possible, followed up by both Kaisar to turn our tokens into more tokens and into draw, and sources of extra token creation to build up our board even further, ideally also alongside payoffs that can take advantage of all the attacks we'll be making and casualties we'll be suffering to generate us more value and inflict more damage into our opponents, until our tokens reach the critical mass necessary for them, backed by Kaisar's burn, to decimate the remainder of our opponent's life totals. The final price of this build then comes out to be 801 after upgrades. This price does not include tax or shipping, and assumes that the price you paid for the precon was $45. The price of the cards was calculated by using the cheapest listed marketplace price on TCG Player at the time of this recording. Now, if we want to add even more upgrades by going over budget, we can refine our creature base by replacing Horn of Gondor with Mirel Shield of Argive, who not only passively exponentially grows our human token count at no mana cost as we attack, but also prevents almost all of our opponent's interaction on our turn to ensure we won't be interrupted as we crash in. Our enchantments can be improved by cutting Marshall's Anthem in favor of War Leader's Call, which is cheaper, still empowers all our creatures, and tax on passive AoE burn as they ETB to soften up our opponents even further, and, of course, we can supercharge our creature token creation by exchanging out Vault 75 Middle School, Paladin Elizabeth Taggarty, and Rabble Rousing for the token multiplying Ogier Tak Deepest Foundation, Mondrak Glory Dominus, and Anointed Procession, which can passively double or even triple our token production so we can absolutely flood the board with bodies, while also, quite fittingly, doubling the price of our deck in the process. Thanks everyone for sticking around until the end of the video. So, with the Hail Kaiser precon complete, the next build we'll be tackling will be the Mutant Menace precon and its face commander, the Wise Mothman. So look forward to that build coming soon. That said, we still have our poll running in the community tab to see which one of the alternate commanders from the Fallout precons will get to have a build of their own. Those being the aura-focused Preston Garvey Minuteman, the dice-rolling Mr. House President and CEO, the Mutant Milling the Master Transcendent, and the energy-hungry robot Liberty Prime Recharged. So be sure to cast your votes, link in the description, before the deadline on March 8th, and let me know in the comments who you voted for and which commanders from this set you'd like to see me feature in future polls. 
And again, before we close out, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Consider donating to buy me a coffee or use my Game Nerds affiliate link if you want to support the channel directly. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, either click on the videos floating around my head for the latest builds, or click on the card above for a playlist of all the deck techs I've made so far. And with that, have a good one folks, and stay safe.